We continue now with our live coverage of CPAC 2023 from National Harbor in the shadow of the nation's capital. And our guest is, well, frankly, an iconic living legend. Yes, Brent yes Bozell, I am. Brent uh, the Grand Poobah creator and founder of Media Research Center, mm. way back in the late 1980s when you saw, hey, mm. seems like these reporters and journalists uh, telling the story from a certain liberal perspective. Yeah. You were, and, and did, I, I've always wanted to ask you this for as many years as I've known you. When you started Media Research Center, did, did the reporters in this town say, what are you doing? We're not, we're not biased, there's nothing here. Oh yeah, you? oh yeah, it was a different world then. Uh, in fact, there was a survey that was taken in 1987, a national survey that said that 75% of the American people believe the media were objective. Uh, now begin here, there is no such thing as objectivity unless you've had a frontal lobotomy. Otherwise, right. you know, you're going to have an opinion. It's going to come out somehow. It begins with what is news. That's a biased decision that by, you're making. By the way, just in case you don't know, this is when Dan Rather was the host of the CBS Evening yeah, News. Yeah, Dan yeah. Dan Rather. Dan, and and uh, now I look back on the on this, and I never thought in a million years I would rue the good old days of Dan Rather, but <laughs> right. I do because you know back then you had CNN. You look 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 what the news media were there. It was ABC, NBC, CBS, and little CNN on television. You had you had uh, a Time Newsweek, U.S. News magazines. Mm -hmm. You had AP, UPI, uh, wire services, and then you had two or three newspapers. Right. That was that it. Was the and every single one of them was liberal. But here's the distinction: they were they had a liberal bias. They didn't have a leftist agenda. Yeah. The liberal they, bias manifest in they were tougher on Republicans when they were interviewing them, and they yeah. were they and were they, catered to liberals. Yeah, and, they distorted the story. Yeah, yeah which would, is, right. you know, and and and, but, and, and I believed that the, that the conservative movement was never going to win the battle of ideas if our ideas were prime rib going into the to into the through the filter and coming out raw sewage to the right, American people, right, and that's right. what was happening. But that was a bias. The world has changed. I, 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 Rush and I talked about uh, about this a lot, and we talked about the fact that these guys did not see themselves as anything but objective, and it's because they lived in a world where not just professionally but socially, yeah. they all thought the same way, and therefore they believed themselves to be modernists. Mm -hmm. And along came this Cro-Magnon, Rush Limbaugh, along came this other Cro-Magnon, Bozell, and others, you know, challenging yeah. that. Um, and, and, and that's why they had nothing but disdain for conservatives who challenged them. So yeah, they, 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 were, they were horrified. I they, first heard about Media Research Center because Rush Limbaugh talked about really? you. He said you, you, you had, they had research done or they were able to get the transcripts. Or, and, and that was so important to hear every day on the most popular, most listened to radio program for three hours every day where he would play their words back. Yeah, yeah. And how powerful, I mean, how important and influential was Rush Limbaugh in the conservative movement? I well, mean, I mean it's, it can't even be quantified, can it? It can't, it can't. Uh, but how, how important are you? Uh, think about this, in, in, in 19, before the, the Fairness Doctrine, was was uh, tossed aside and and cable and radio was deregulated. You couldn't talk to the, the only person who could talk to the American people was uh, Paul Harvey on, on on the afternoon in Chicago. Mm. He was the only conservative who was allowed to have a voice. When it was opened up, your in your industry is pure. Um, it, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a pure free market proposition. If Larry O'Connor is not popular, his show is canceled, as it should be. Well, there's a reason why you've been on year after year after year, because you have an audience that wants to come to you. And that's what you should have in the media today. Well, look at CNN. CNN is falling apart. CNN could be, I was telling this story today, but, but just to go a little step further. There was a new president that was named at CNN. This is about 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. And I knew him and I called him and I said, I'm gonna do you a favor. I'm gonna do you two favors. Um, favor number one, I'm gonna show you how to become a number one news network. And he said, well, how? And I said, well, God, after, this, after this phone call, 
uh, have somebody fire up CNN One, the corporate jet, get on it, bring a checkbook, go down to Palm Beach, ask people if they know where this guy Rush Limbaugh lives, go to his door, knock on the door, mm -hmm. sign a check, let him fill in the amount and tell him that you can do anything he wants to and you'll have the number one network if you believe in free market economics, you'll have the number one network on television. And he said, what's your second idea? <laughs> and, 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 I, and I said, my, I said, my second idea is don't ever piss off Roger Ailes. <laughs> this guy chews roofing nails for breakfast. Yeah. So two weeks later, I pick up a newspaper and here's the president of CNN who says, quote, we're going to be a real news network, not like Fox News. And I thought, my friend, you're dead. I went to see Roger a couple weeks later, got off the elevator on his floor. Here's a sign right off the elevator, just, just there on the wall. And it says, we're going to be a real news network, not Fox News. And I said, Roger, why is that there? And he said, just to piss me off. Yeah. And two weeks later, the guy was gone. There it uh, is. Uh, if CNN were simply an open news network, they would do fine. Yeah, I told you, living legend, Brett Bozell. What a great story. Uh, well, everyone says, oh, why is talk radio so conservative? Why is talk radio cons so conservative? It's, it's because it works. Yeah. It's because the, the, the left can't do what talk radio does. They've tried over and over, over again. Over. Yeah. We, 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 we've lost sight of it, but, but over and over again, they have sponsored national talk shows, Jesse Jackson, Doug, uh, yeah. Doug Wilder, uh, Mario, one after another, and every single one failed. And that's what I mean by the market. Yeah. The only one that has succeeded, National Public Radio, where, where the taxpayers forced to pay for it. subsidized. But I gotta ask you, I'm, the, the media landscape has changed so rapidly just in the last yeah. 10 years, five years really with social media mm -hmm. and with the power of these new tech giants. Mm -hmm. And I know at the, the, the Media Research Center, you are very much focused on this because now we've gone from media bias to media as a weapon against conservatives mm -hmm. and now just outright censorship. Yeah, yeah they, they, if, you, if you go out to Palo Alto and you look at the people on that coast, they believe, not, they don't, it's not that conservatism is wrong, they, they truly believe it's evil. They truly believe what you and I are discussing right now is hate speech, and they believe it's not a political movement, it's a moral imperative on to shut us down, to not allow us to speak, because we are advancing hatred in America. That's, they, they, they believe this, yes. they, they honestly believe this. So that's, that's they, and they don't believe in free speech. They look at the European model of governance where free speech doesn't exist, where virtue, their definition of their virtue, trumps free speech. Yeah. You're allowed to speak only if you advance their virtue. But I gotta ask you, I mean, when you go to a, a, I don't even think there is a liberal version of CPAC, but uh, the, the media landscape for the left, New York Times, Washington Post, LA Times, CBS, ABC, NBC, CNN, it hasn't really grown. No. It's the same. That's exactly what you would have said about the liberal media landscape 20 years yeah, ago. Yeah. You come to see that. Look at Media Row here. Look at all of the startups. Look at the Daily yeah, Wire. Yeah. And now they're making movies and they're doing television shows. And we're getting into the pop culture now yeah. with streaming. There's growth in conservative traditional American messaging yeah. that you don't see on the left. No, no. And, and, and they're trying new networks, but they're underwritten by George Soros. Uh, and, and they have to be there. Again, there isn't a market demand for this. But yeah. I, but here's the warning, Flair. And I wrote about this in a book a few this years ago. This is why ago. I like you, because I'm always optimistic and happy talk, and you're like, yeah, Larry, hold on. Be, well, well, be he, careful. No, no but, but reality, because, yeah. because this is exactly what happened. I wrote about this in a book, that we were winning, and winning dramatically when we were fighting media bias. But I warned, look what a rat does when it's cornered. It instinctively lunges for the jugular. And I warn in this book, the media are going to go for the jugular. They're never, they're never going to become fair and objective. They're never going to go in that direction. They're going to get personal. And that's exactly what happened. Now, we didn't see social media coming. We didn't see those things coming. But the, but the mindset is one of, of destroying the conservative movement. It's ugly, we must never lower ourselves to yeah. their level. As we were talking about you know, off air, we're talking about, just laugh at these. We had, well, we had a panel here at CPAC, we were talking about this media bias, and we, we, were, we had fun. Yeah, we did. We laughed, we, we gotta laugh at them, we've gotta mock them, we've gotta show them how to because they are, and by the way, and that there, was- And there goes our Christmas card invitations. Oh, it's so sad. But that was Russia's strength. He, happy Warrior, Andrew Breitbart, Happy Warrior. Yeah. 
Um, there's there's something to that. Yeah, and but but, and, but Larry, it's your and strength. You're like that too. Larry, it's your strength. I, I don't know that I've ever been on your show. Where we do, at one point or another, we didn't laugh. It, liberals don't laugh. Yeah. If you know, watch NPR. They're so oh, they're serious because they have to look yeah. at awful things in the world. So we're winning. Yeah, you know, you know, we, we we are winning. Right. We are winning. We'll Ronald Reagan. That, yeah, we we are winning. Be happy warriors. Be storytellers. The, the, it, it'll all take care of itself. Rempozel Media Research Center. There's more to come on O'Connor tonight.